we got a great matchup coming up on ESPN2. Candace Parker in Tennessee looking to avenge their only loss in the SEC against Sylvia Fowles and LSU. Kevin Nagani here with Kara Lawson. What a finish. I mean, <laughs> Lakeisha Freeman, the story for Purdue, that, that bucket right there. Illinois had that chance, but they didn't clear out. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's going to stick with Illinois and Lacey Simpson. And when you have that opportunity, you have to know to box out and, and not give Kiki Freeman that chance. But credit Purdue here because this is a team, a young team, that had lost Lindsey Wisdom Hilton, who was returning an All-American. They had lost Jody Howe. And this is a team that put role players into now star player positions. And they took their lumps early on in the season, a 50-point loss at home to Connecticut. But they've made a stretch run here, and they're going to the NCAA tournament, Big Ten champs for the second year in a row. So congratulations to the Boilermakers. Great job by Sharon Versa in getting this team ready and maturing. And that's what you hope. You hope a team matures over the course of the season. On the other side, really tough loss for Illinois. What a great run in this tournament for them and uh, their first year head coach to make such a great impression. Also knocking off the number one seed Ohio State, but losing by a buzzer beater. Hey, we got some good games going on right now in the Big East. Quarterfinals. Louisville Rutgers in a tight one. Kia Vaughn and Rutgers down at one point inside off glass right now. This one back and forth, of course, going to keep you up to date as it rolls on. 49-47, Louisville with the lead with under seven minutes to go. A great one going on right now. We have much more coming up. Let's go to Nashville. Eric Collins, Carolyn Peck have much more in the SEC championship game, guys. The women's SEC tournament has returned to Nashville, Tennessee. Tonight just steps away from the Country Music Hall of Fame. Two record-breaking headliners will face the music. Tennessee's Candace Parker, last year's SEC Player of the Year. And this year's SEC Player of the Year, LSU Sylvia Fowles. Both women know they'll be in the big dance. But on the line, a possible number one seed. Welcome to Championship Week, presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. Today, a championship will be won in the Somay Center here in Nashville. The Tennessee Lady Balls trying to figure out LSU, while the Lady Tigers trying to sweep the SEC regular season and tournament titles. Thrilled to have you here. Alongside Carolyn Peck, I'm Eric Collins. Rebecca Lobo will join us in just a couple of moments. Well, last year was the year of Tennessee and Candace Parker. Candace won the Wade Trophy. She won the Wooden Award. SEC, er, Tennessee, they won the national championship. But this year, Carolyn, the worm has turned already this year. We have found out that LSU Sylvia Fowles has beaten out Candace Parker for the SEC Player of the Year. Well, and the coaches voted Sylvia Fowles for the SEC Player of the Year. I think well-deserving when you think about having to face Candace Parker not, or face Sylvia Fowles night in and night out. Uh, not to so not to take anything away from her that she doesn't deserve it. But Candace Parker, it's definitely been a motivation for her, Eric. And I think that this game today will help all to see who is the true SEC Player of the Year. All right, let's compare them. Let's look at the numbers. What are the differences between our two Star Watch candidates in Parker and Fowle? Well, when you look at Parker's numbers, the thing that you've got to consider, she plays really all five positions on the floor, point to wing to post. She does so many different things for her team. But on the other end, it's Sylvia Fowles, and every coach that's ever had to coach against Sylvia Fowles has got to go through great preparation trying to figure out a way to stop such a big girl and powerful player inside. Let's take a look at the starting laps. We'll start with the Lady Balls, and there's a change. Alberta Augusti, a senior, replacing Angie Bjorklund, a freshman. Bjorklund has been struggling as of late, so Augusti gets the nod. For the Louisiana State Lady Tigers, they are a, a senior-laden team. They start five of them. Erica White's the point guard for Shante LeBlanc, Kiana Cheney, and Ashley Thomas, along with Sylvia Fowles up front. Well, standing by is the third member of our crew, Rebecca Lobo. Rebecca, what's going on? Well, Eric, Sylvia Fowles is obviously very worthy of SEC Player of the Year honors. But how has Candace Parker responded to not getting the award? Pat Summit said that in the tournament, Candace has been running the floor really hard, posting up more physically, and playing better defense. When I asked Pat if she thinks Candace is playing like this because of the Player of the Year results, she said, you were a player. What do you think? Guys, I think Sylvia Fowles was right on the money when she told me this morning, I'm pretty sure Candace is going to play like she has a lot to prove. Thank you, Rebecca. Sylvia Fowles was giddy 
when she was informed on Tuesday that she was the SEC Player of the Year. I think beginning of the year, she probably didn't have any clue at all that she'd have a chance to, to take down Candace Parker in that category. Well, when you talk about the SEC, Eric, you're talking about Candace Parker. That's been the talk for her whole career that she's been in college. But Sylvia Fowles has definitely made a name for herself, and she has put up some tremendous numbers, both offensively, block shots, and rebounding. So, you know, it's nice for her to be recognized by the coaches in the SEC. Candace Parker, well, there's an expression. Don't go tugging on Superman's cape. Well, Sylvia Fowles did some tugging, and Candace Parker, she's responded, averaging over 25 points and two wins so far in this tourney. And I think that going up LSU, going against Tennessee, the last thing you want to do is to give her any kind of motivation. There's Van Chancellor now in his first season coaching the Lady Tigers of LSU. 466 wins, one of against a woman who's got 976 wins, the most in the history of Division I basketball, men's or women's. Pat Summit, she's been there and won that. Tap is won by LSU. Lady Tigers, the number one seed, they're wearing the home whites. Derek, this is a rematch from February 14th, Valentine's Day, where LSU went from being 19 down, had a 35-point turnaround and end up winning by 16. Heartbreaker on Valentine's Day for Tennessee. Anna Sicky, wide open shot. I don't know if that's a, the type of shot that Pat Summit would want from the perimeter from Nikki Anasiki. White bottled up, loses the handle, gets it over to Sylvia Fowl. LSU, 27 wins, just four losses. Tennessee, 29 wins and two losses. Inside, fouls her second shot. This one off the mark. Well, I think you're going to see Nikki Anasiki is trying to be really physical with Sylvia Fowles. Right now, Tennessee is guarding her one-on-one. -on -one. I think it's going to be a battle in the paint. We're going to see both coaches try to establish the candidates for player of the year. Sylvia Fowles for LSU and Candace Parker for Tennessee. Gorgeous move, Candace Parker. Her first shot results in two points. Tennessee, too, is going to have to change up their defenses and try to keep LSU off balance. Don't let them get in any kind of rhythm in figuring out how they're going to get the ball inside. Fouls inside. She's missed her first two shots, both of them close to the rim. This time, little jump hook is shy. Well, it reminds you of LSU when they were in the semifinals of the national championship tournament. She got frustrated against Rutgers, and her numbers were not very impressive. Bobbitt gets it over to Candace Parker. Horn buckle. Now Candace reposts. Facing up against Ashley Thomas. When you're all American, you get that role. She has been playing like she's got something to prove. In the previous two games against Florida and then against uh, Vanderbilt, Candace Parker established herself inside first, playing very physical, and then let the game come to her where she then took advantage of situations on the perimeter. Good backdoor cut, and the bucket is made by Rashante LeBlanc. Ashley Thomas gets the credit for that assist. I think Tennessee needs to continue to go to Candace Parker. Let her continue to do her deal. Now, that's what happened in Knoxville. Candace Parker got going early, then they stopped going to her, and Tennessee started jacking up shots. Continue to establish and ride your All-American. Alberta Augusti. Quickly the other way. Erica White gets it right back. Well, Eric, there are eight seniors on this LSU team that have yet to win a tournament championship. So Van Chancellor really wants to put these seniors in the position to where they win their first championship, having won an SEC championship, and they've not won, they've been to the Final Four, they've not won a national championship. Carolyn, how is this LSU team different And this is the first year under Van Chancellor? I think the freedom. I think the handcuffs are off. I think Coach Pokey Chapman coached a more controlled certain people she wanted shooting the basketball. What Van Chancellor has done is said, everybody, you can shoot the ball. You work on it, you can shoot the ball. And I think this team is playing with a lot more freedom, and they're having a lot more fun. Sylvia Fowles gets her first bucket, and it's a 6-6 time. Just getting started here in Nashville, Tennessee. Now LSU has switched up their defense, going to zone. 
Bobbitt gets inside. Floater too strong. And Fouls is whacked and pushed out of bounds. They're going to call a foul on Nikki Anasicki. Sylvia Fouls has done a tremendous job with their positioning, and there's not too much you can do with that. One of the things that Tennessee has struggled with defending is the high-low. And Pat Summit was emphasizing that at shoot-around this morning of keeping the ball out of the middle of the floor. Because as long as Tennessee is going to allow Ashley Thomas to catch it up top, they'll be able to throw that lob down low to Sylvia Fowles all night long. White has it on the wing. Shot clock down to six. Senior point guard is going to be fouled on her way to the bucket. Shannon Bobbitt grabbed her on her way through. All right, time to catch our breath. Van Chancellor, the number one seed, in LSU Lady Tigers tied with Pat Summit's Lady Ball. Welcome back, everyone. There is Van Chancellor, his team running through the SEC during the regular season, a perfect 14-0. Their most impressive conference win would definitely be the win against Tennessee. They're trying to make it two in a row. Well, and it's from the establishment of the high-low game. It's one thing that Pat Summit was concerned about was keeping the ball out of the middle of the floor. When you get the ball at the top of the key, it's tough for the, your teammates to help you because they've got to defend on the wing. So it's one-on-one -on -one for Sylvia Fowles down low. Sylvia gets it inside, loses it back out to LeBlanc. And Tennessee has switched up who's guarding Sylvia Fowles. It had been Nikki Anasiki. Now it's Candace Parker on Sylvia Fowles. Quickly in the way. Orn Buckle picks up her dribble over to Candace Parker. I think that's a huge mismatch. And Candace should try to take Ashley. And Parker, she's three for three so far today. Great start for the All-American. Little jump hook too strong off the hand of Fowles and rebound and Sicky. Sylvia Fowles is shooting the ball early instead of getting her shoulder square to the basket. I like how Candace just took it right at Sylvia Fowles. She misses, but it was a game effort. It's a great battle to see those two go against each other. And someone forgot all about Kiana Cheney. Well, that's when LSU is good, when they're scoring early and don't have to run an offense. They want to create offense from their defense. And as soon as, especially Kiana Cheney, gets an open look, she's got the green light to knock that shot down. The zone is an issue. Tennessee, it's taken them a while to figure out because LSU is switching up their defenses. And a sicky on the block. Tennessee's, or LSU is in a box at one. They're not going to get it off. Shot clock violation. Took Tennessee too long to figure out what kind of defense LSU was in. Then we'll see LSU, or Tennessee change up their defense. Coming with a little three-quart pressure, it looks like. Tennessee's going to start to trap and make some things happen themselves defensively. That's the first turnover of the game for either side. LeBlanc gets inside, back out to White. White keeps her dribble alive. Gorgeous move. A little bit too short of the finger roll. Parker clears it itself. Gets it back, elbow jumper. And Asiki is whacked from behind. Take a look at the numbers for both Candace Parker and Sylvia Fowles. When you look at those numbers, Parker has it on the points, Fowles has it on the rebounds. Field goal percentage, but Sylvia Fowles, all her points are in the paint. Candace Parker is shooting it, like I said before, she plays all five positions, so she's playing out on the wing, shooting the three, and down low. She's doing a great, it's a, and that's a great battle. I think it was a tough call. It had to be a tough call for the coaches to decide. Rebecca, do you have more? You guys, Candace Parker early on playing very aggressive offensively. I asked her earlier today if she had something to prove. She said, always. I always think I have something to prove. She said, it's the postseason. You step up a little bit more. A national championship is indisputable. What player is going to step up and lead her team to one of you guys? It's obvious she believes she's that player. And she said, Rebecca, that the most important thing that she wants, not necessarily a trophy or a plaque, 
that says that you were player of the year. She wants that na another national championship ring. Do you think there's a chance that Candace Parker could be in play for, for national awards like the Wooden and the Wade absolutely. without winning the SEC? Yes, absolutely. You know, that's voted on by the coaches. And the Kodak, there's a committee that votes. There's media voting. So this SEC Player of the Year, that was purely the 12 coaches in the SEC. Shannon Bobbitt hits her first three. And Sylvia Fowles continues to struggle inside for the Lady Tigers. She's just one for her first six. Well, that's been Sylvia Fowles' M.O. in big games. Sometimes she gets a little giddy, gets too hyped up, and not, is not able to, to calm down and play the game that she normally plays. Well, don't forget, the Big East Women's Championship presented by Aero Postal. Tuesday, 7 Eastern time is your start time. So far, UConn, they are just rolling. Jump shot along the wing, Alberta Augusti hits her second shot. Why is Augusti getting the start and not Bjorklund for Pat Summit? Well, Bjorklund has been inconsistent scoring. And that's and so if you're going to be inconsistent, Pat Summit's going to go with the consistency she can get. And the one thing she knows that she can get from Alberta is defense and rebounding. The offensive production scored that last basket. That was a bonus for Tennessee. It's an 8-0 run now for the Lady Vols as Candace Parker continues to play fantastic basketball. But I remind you, Eric, that LSU went down in Knoxville. They were behind. And Van Chancellor never worried. Deanna Cheney a, gets three back. He called a timeout. Nothing happened. The team didn't change. Had to call a second time, a second timeout. But and after that, his team responded. Not only closed the gap, but took the lead and ended up winning by 16. And a foul is going to be called as Erica White splits the double team. All right, timeout on the floor. We're going to take it with him when we come back. We will preview a brand new Pat Summit. This is Sports Center ad. <laughs> ah, Carolyn, you worked with her for a number of years. You're an assistant. She has that side to her. She's got a real soft side. She has a great sense of humor. I think the camera during games sometimes, they only catch her at her intense moments. But I'm going to tell you, Pat Summit is a comedian. When I worked at Tennessee, she would come up with some things that you just, you go, Okay, are you losing your mind? <laughs> she's got a great sense of humor. Has she mellowed at all in the 34 years that she's been head coach? I think she's adjusted to the players that she's had to coach. You know, the kids have changed, and Pat Summit's done a great job of adjusting to how, how the kids have changed and how she's got to coach, motivate, and teach them. Second field goal of the game for Sylvia Fowles, now with four points. Well, up until this last time out, Sylvia Fouts was one for six, and that's in the paint. She normally shoots 60% against 60% for the game. Angie Bjorklund into the game for the first time for Tennessee, wearing number five. And Bjorklund's had to come into the game because Shannon Bobbitt has got picked up two early fouls. Now called there on Sylvia Fouts, her first personal. That's the third team foul on LSU. And LSU has gone back to a man-to-man, -man, and now Sylvia Fowles is guarding Candace Parker. There she is. Parker working against Fowles. A good double team by Ashley Thomas. Orn Buckle guarded by Erica White. Shot clock down to five. Shot is missed, but rebound Ashley Thomas. And that's what she's got to do. Ashley Thomas had a double-double against Kentucky, 11 rebounds. So she picks up the slack because a lot of teams sometimes send two people to box out Sylvia Fowles. Fowles, turn around along the baseline, in and out. She's not following her shot. She's shooting it and heading the other direction. She's got to follow, stay in there till the ball goes through the hole. Look at those hands for Candace Parker, just palming it out there on the wing. Like a yo-yo. She can do so many different things. When you think about it, she can practice against her brother, Anthony Parker, her fiance, Sheldon Williams. That's some training in the offseason. 
Alberta Augusti solid start getting the rare starting knot already six points for the Lady Balls. Cheney misfires. Numbers for the Lady Balls five on four. Zorkland. Zorkland was removed from the starting lineup and she's a fierce competitor. Pat had challenged or threatened to take her out of the starting lineup before the Rutgers game. But boy, she hit a big three down the stretch that was able, that allowed Tennessee to close the gap and put them in the position to win the game. Good double team, ball knocked away from fouls. Anasicki. That's not where you want Nikki Anasicki. Parker on the wing, working against fouls. Sylvia Fowles, the SEC Defensive Player of the Year for a reason, as she forces the air ball off the fingertips of Candace Parker. Rebecca. Well, guys, Angie Bjorklund didn't start tonight. The only other game she didn't start this season was senior night. The reason the last three games, she's only had five points on two of 12 shooting. Pat's criticism has been not with her shooting, but her lack of energy. She's come out flat the last few games and hasn't gotten into a rhythm. Angie told me this morning, hopefully coming off the bench will get me fired up. It's been a little bit of a mental fatigue. It's been hard going from conference play to raise the level to tournament play, but hopefully I'll get it get together mentally tonight. Well, the, 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 the thing about it is, is when you are put into the starting lineup for the Lady Vols, it's not like being in the starting lineup of, of any team. With the caliber of competition that the Lady Vols go against, that's a quick education, and it's very easy for a freshman to get get tired, and mental fatigue's tough, as it is, tough enough. This foul is called against Sylvia Fowles. She thought she had a clean block. It's her second personal. Well, Tennessee is lobbing right over her, and it depends on whether or not you're going to call the hand as part of the ball or not. I think if she'd have gone straight up, a little squat there with it at the end. Van Chancellor's going to leave her in the game with two fouls. She's going to have to play smart. Is this a good move, leaving Sylvia Fowles in the game with two fouls? You know, I think Sylvia Fowles has matured a lot. And I think that that shows a great sign of trust in Van Chancellor. And Sylvia Fowles has been in this position before, but I think that she can, can play with two fouls. And there's a good chance that today Candace Parker will get to 2,000 career points. She needed 19 coming into today's game, and she's now just eight away. 1,992 points for the great Candace Parker. Well, she's only five free throws away of breaking her own free throw record in makes it a season. Ball out of bounds. Last touch by Tennessee. It'll stay with the Lady Tigers of LSU. Candace Parker in Tennessee up by seven. Seven fifteen remaining. First half. Wow. How about that, Carolyn? That obviously affects your uh, your tournament seats. It does. I think that ne that knocks Rutgers out of. Uh, an opportunity for number one seed. And if LSU, especially if LSU were to be able to clinch the SEC title uh, for the tournament, move them to Spokane, they would be a number one seed. That's not a bad draw, I think, for Van Chancellor. I think he would give up at being able to play in New Orleans by being the number one seed out west in Spokane. Yeah, kind of an interesting question. What would you rather have of your Van Chancellor? Be a number two in your own backyard in New Orleans or be a number one and have to head out way west to Spokane, Washington? I think the most important thing that coaches look at is not necessarily where you go, but who you have to play. And so if you're a number one seed, you are predicted by the committee as being the best team in that region. So I don't think Van Chancellor would be upset if he were sent to Spokane as a number one. Is it a done deal, Tennessee? Even if they lose today, are they still a number one seed in your eyes? Tennessee is a number one seed. I would think that that would be the most ludicrous, as Mike Tyson would say, <laughs> for them to be knocked out. Even if they lose today, they have the number one strength of schedule. They have the number one RPI. They are, I think, have played the toughest schedule. LSU, or Tennessee, I think is, regardless of the outcome tonight, a number one seed. Lady Balls only have two losses at Stanford and at home against LSU. 
Look at the long wingspan of Parker. She gets that entry pass. The only other loss that the committee might consider or win or question mark is the game against Rutgers. But I think it's a mute point with Rutgers being put out early in the Big East, in the Big East tournament. I think I just saw Candace Parker, Candace Parker limp on the way down the floor. Looked like she may have slightly twisted an ankle on that jump shot. Let's take another look. Allison Hightower over to Erica White. Hightower gets inside. Lefty runner, no. Here comes Bjorklund. Well, and Allison Hightower was named sixth woman of the year in the SEC, tied with Jessica Mooney from Vanderbilt. She's been a great spark for the, for the Lady Tigers. And a timeout is called. Candace Parker is limping noticeably on her way to the bench. We will figure this all out and have to report, no doubt. 6.41 remaining, first half, Tennessee up by seven. Now, Smokey's excited at the seven-point lead for Tennessee, but maybe not so excited about the bell count. The Lady Balls limping a bit on the floor. Candace Parker, a little bit of a scare for Lady Ball fans on that last time down the floor. But she's still in the game, and they need her. She's got to almost half the team's points. Well, she's playing very physical and very aggressive. And talked about National Player of the Year. You, know, you asked me, in my opinion, would it be Maya Moore or Candace Parker? I said Co-Player of the Year. But after watching how Candace Parker has played in this SEC tournament, she's really up to stop. LSU down by seven. Tennessee has made a good move with Candace Park on Ashley Thomas up top. That's tough to pass over. Good move for Hightower. Sophomore from Arlington, Texas. Bit of a cold spell for Tennessee. They haven't scored in almost four minutes. Shannon Bobbitt is back in the game with two fouls. Last touch by Parker. Well, tomorrow night, championship week continues with two conference championships. First at 7 Eastern time, it's the Colonial Athletic Association Championship, followed up by the West Coast Conference Championship. Championship week presented by Dick Sporting Goods on ESPN. White misses, high tower the rebound. And Sylvia Fowles has got to keep moving toward the ball, not just look for the lob. She's got to look for the post up as well. And a tie-up between Anasiki and Fowles. Possession arrow favors the Lady Ball. Now, Eric, Anasiki is tied up with, with Sylvia Fowles there. How about this? Nikki Anasiki did not make the all-defensive team in the SEC. She has defended, and I coached in the SEC, she has defended every position on the floor. She'll guard a point guard. She'll guard a wing. She's guarding Sylvia Fowles right now, and she cannot get put on the SEC all-defensive team. Yeah, we talked to Pat Summit earlier today, and she was none too pleased about that outcome. Well, and I think it's been a great motivator for Nikki Anasiki. She's played some tre tremendous defense in the in the tournament so far. I mean, how do you, you draw the assignment of some of the best players in the conference, and you're not put on that team? Hightower throws it up, no, gets it back. And the troubles continue for Sylvia Fowles. Alberta Augusti back into the game, over to Bobbitt. And it's sicky, they just give her that shot. I got it. And what do we have? Officials getting together in front of Van Chancellor. And it looks like, I think it's Joe Cunningham, who may be a little bit gimpy right now. That's Joe Cunningham bending over, now straightening up his pants. Looks like he's okay. We hope he is. Mary Day is going to have to come in to take over for him. Yeah, we actually have standby officials here at the SEC tournament. And it looks as if Mary Day will be called on to come in. There she is tying her shoes.
And there she is. So Mary Day, welcome, welcome to the party. Mary Day, Johnny on the spot, ready to take over. Joe Cunningham had to had to had to bow out. So LSU trailing by five. Bring it across the timeline. Tennessee with a 2 2 1 three quarter court. Miles really wants it. She gets it. Working against Parker. And she travels before she can start the move. She did hop, but I like how Sylvia Fowles has gone away from just relying on the lob. She's posting up. Now, the thing about it is when you make a pass into the post player, what you don't want to do is make her come out of the stance and give up the ground that she's gained by posting up. Drop her a little bounce pass, or if you can, hit her right in the numbers. Bob, it thought about it. She likes that spot on the wing. All poked away. Augusti gets it back. Not the bounds. Last touch by LSU. It'll stay with the Lady Balls. Time out on the floor. 354 remaining. First half. Tennessee up by five. On the Cisco Halftime Report, North Carolina looking to continue its dominance in the ACC and earn a number one seed in the Big Dance and the Big Ten Championship featuring a buzzer beater between Purdue and Illinois, plus a big upset in the Big East. Back to you guys. Thank you so much. Welcome back. Tennessee up by five in large part because of their all-everything forward, Candace Parker. Well, Candace Parker got off to an early start like she has in every game in the SEC tournament so far. She's been been calling for the ball and not just relying on a perimeter game or a pretty game, but she's playing with some muscle. But the SEC Player of the Year, Sylvia Fowles, seems to be struggling on the other end. And I think it has a lot to do with the, with the defense played by Nikki Anasiki. Candace, 11 points. Fowles, 4 points. Two fouls already. Just trying to avoid the 30-second shot clock violation. Hornbuckle throws it up. But it didn't hit any rim, so they do get the turnover call against them. Look at the comparison of the production. Candace Parker and Sylvia Files. And Candace Parker is shooting 50%. She's 5 of 10 so far. High towel. Over to Cheney. Inside to foul. As it poked away, it'll stay with the Lady Tigers. And LSU was throwing the ball, leaving it up there up high and causing Sylvia Fowles to come out of her stance. Give her a bounce pass or hit her in the numbers, but don't make her have to give up the ground that she's that she's gained by posting up. Seven seconds on the shot clock. See if the Lady Tigers realize. Quickly into Fowles. Takes her time and finishes with a left hand. Wow. She can go up and get the basketball. That was almost a shot for Keanu Chaney. Just throw it around the rim. Fowles can go get it. Rumpel working off a screen from Alex Fuller. Well, Alex Fuller is being guarded by Sylvia Files. Files hasn't come out, doesn't come out to guard her. Fuller can shoot the three. Parker, turn around. Feathery soft touch. The yellow shoes got to change who's guarding who. Put Thomas on Alex Fuller and Candace Parker. Oh, and Candace goes down on Sylvia Files. hard. And if that's on Sylvia Files, that's her third. No, they call it on Erica White. Foul call on Erica White. Oh, she checked her. Wow. 15 foul on LSU. Tennessee, just one field goal. Well, that was Candace Parker's minutes. basket just a possession ago. Orange off a good, strong rebound, and the ball slips through the fingertips of Candace Parker for another turnover. Becca, what's the latest on Joe Cunningham? Well, guys, this is the first time I will ever do an injury report on a referee. But Joe Cunningham said this is a recurring injury. It happened at the beginning of the season where he tore the top of his calf. But, guys, in the regular season, there is not an alternate official sitting on the scores table, only during the tournament. He said we don't want a game of this magnitude to come down to a situa situation like this. We'll only have two healthy referees. 
That's good to, that they do have that. I mean, when you come down to the SEC finals and if there were to have an injury to an official and have to finish a game and have it decided with only two officials on the floor. Championship week continues Tuesday at 7 Eastern time for the Big East Women's Championship. The Big East Women's Championship presented by Arrow Post Dow as part of Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods on ESPN2. It will not be a rematch of UConn and Rutgers. Rutgers already has been eliminated in quarterfinal play. Well, Angel McCaltry from Louisville, for Louisville, you know, she was picked preseason Big East Player of the Year. That's before people got a view of Maya Moore, who was the first freshman, male or female, Big East Player of the Year. You know, we were, I was talking about Player of the Year, and, and I had said before that, you know, Eric, could I, Eric, you asked me that I think it was Candace Parker or Maya Moore because I do really have great respect for both players and Maya Moore being a freshman, the things that she's done. But Candace Parker has made a case for herself in this SEC tournament. She's playing with a sense of urgency. She's played hard every game in the tournament so far and has put on some All-American and National Player of the Year moves in scoring and rebounding and defense now going into this championship game. Well, we've already been surprised once this year when Sylvia Fowles won the SEC Player of the Year. Could we be surprised and see Sylvia Fowles win the Wade Trophy or the Wooden Award? Well, I think she's a finalist and definitely a candidate. Not to take anything away from Sylvia Fowles, because when you think about preparing as an opponent of going against a player like Sylvia, Sylvia Fowles, you have to pair, prepare for her like no other, just like you have to prepare for Candace Parker like no other. Offensive rebound for the Lady Tigers. See if they get it inside to Fowles. Cheney takes it to the rack. Parker the rebound. Lady Vols up by three, but they've been silent for a, a good majority of the last eight minutes of the first half. It's a tough defensive matchup for Ashley Thomas to have to guard Candace Parker. A little bit short the rebound cleared by Ashley Thomas. Here comes White on the run out. High tower. I think. Eric, one thing that I think LSU is missing is Kiana Cheney. Now, she had to play 38 minutes against Kentucky. She had 18 points, had a big game, but, you know, when you're playing back-to-back -back games in the tournament without any rest, she's not been able to get open and get her three-point shot going. Parker spins along the baseline. Before the shot, the travel. Another turnover gives the ball back over to LSU. Now Pat Summons confused about that as well. I thought she had a pivot foot established. That exact same move worked when Joe Cunningham was working the baseline. It doesn't fly with Mary Day working the whistle. <laughs> the clock is running and the ball is not in bounds. Well, that's an issue right now. The they did not notice that. Or, no, Erica White had it inbound. She was just standing there. Difference of about five seconds. Game clock and shot clock. Cheney's going to have to fire. <laughs> Thorne buckle the rebound. Lady Balls are going to have to fly. Over to Brooklyn. Clean look. And the freshman just a little bit too strong. And that'll do it. Candace Parker, 13 points, most of them coming early. Sylvia Fowles with six first half points. Let's go over to Rebecca Lobo, standing by with Van Chancellor. Coach, Tennessee missed 11 of their last 14 shots. What did you do so effectively in the second part of that half on the defensive end? What we did then, we just decided we wouldn't go let Candace Parker beat us, so we began to double her and make somebody else make a shot. Same thing they're doing to Sylvia Fowles. What was the thought process when Sylvia picked up her second and you left her in the game? All year long, we have taken her out of the basketball game, but we can't take her out. If she fouls out, we're in trouble anyhow. We just went to a little zone play play and letting her double but I don't want her to take another foul. All right coach thank you. Eric. Thank you Rebecca. All right it's a three-point game at the half. Now let's go to the studio. Kevin Agundi and Carol Lawson.
Welcome back to Championship Week presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. We have 20 minutes in the books here at the SEC Women's Tournament. Tennessee on top LSU by three in large part because of Candace Parker. She came out aggressively right out of the locker room in the first half. Carolyn, she's got 13 first half points. Rate her performance as well as Sylvia Files. We talked about the top of the show with Sylvia Files being named SEC Player of the Year. I think Candace Parker's got something to prove. She's trying to say, I got a case for myself. Now I should have maybe gotten a, a few more, a few more votes. She has been so dominant. 22 points already in the first half, Eric, and she has established herself physically. She has been so tough inside. Sylvia Fowles has struggled with the defense that Nikki Anasiki has played on her, and at times it's been Candace Parker playing some defense as well. Those are our Guinness first half stats. Neither team shooting particularly well as a club. Sylvia Fowles and LSU shooting 32% as a team, while Tennessee shooting 37% as a team. But you got to expect that when you're playing for a championship, it's going to be the defense that's going to be extremely tough, and that will affect the field goal percentage. This is what is on the line. Tennessee, Carolyn, you believe they've already locked up a number one seed in the women's NCAA tournament. But LSU, should they win today's game and knock off Pat Summit's team for the second time on the year, you think they may have a chance of being a number one seed? I think, LSU, I think LSU definitely has a shot of being a number one seed. With the convincing win that Stanford had against UCLA, Stanford's trying to make a case for themselves to be a number one seed and be out west in Spokane. Then the question is, what do you do with LSU? Right now, I've got Tennessee coming to New Orleans. So now, does the committee move a North Carolina or a Tennessee to Oklahoma City so that LSU can, can be in the region for New Orleans. After the Keanu Chaney bucket for LSU, it's just a one-point game. Move it back up to four. Let me take a scouting, Bobbitt. scouting report is Shannon Bobbitt loves the baseline, the baseline corner shot. She says, I'll shoot it from anywhere. And if I'm scouting Tennessee, you got to know if Shannon Bobbitt's done in that corner, you better put a hand in her face because she can knock down the shot. Inside the foul. Gets away from Anna Sicky. Foul on the floor. Let's go over to Rebecca Lobo. Rebecca, what's going on? You guys, Pat, some are very relaxed coming out of the locker room. She said, that's the best 20 minutes of defense we've played all season. But I'd like us to score a couple times. She said, offensively, we'll want a little bit more misdirection. We were going strong side, then immediately reversing the ball. They'll look to utilize that strong side a little bit more, Carolyn. Well, I think they've got to use the strong side more, and they've got to get more production from their guards, Rebecca. One of the things that Pat Summit talked about also was paint points. But she wasn't talking about points from the post players. She was talking about paint points from her guard. She wants them to attack and try to get to the free throw line more often. Horn buckle along the free throw line. Her first bucket of the second half. Quickly the other way. Wright picks up the ball. And it's poked away. Finally run down by Thomas, who hits the deck. It'll stay with LSU. How is that pop? No, it was simply a miscommunication. I think it's Ryan Tennessee Inland. basketball. I think he was going to call it out on Pat Summit. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, there you can tell there's a championship on the line. Pow! Right there. Now, it, it could happen in games I've seen. That could have been called as a foul with a uh, horn buckle on, on high tower. Horn buckle? Or on Thomas. A little bit short offensive rebound and a sicky. Extra possession for the Lady Vols. I think Cheney's playing now. Birdie too close. Not a strong three-point shooter. I'd make her prove herself. She's going to try to take you off the dribble. And a sicky offensive rebound and stick back. The senior from Staten Island stepping up. Cheney. Too strong, and they're going to call a foul, a block on Alberta Augusti. I think Nikki Anasiki's stock for the WNBA draft continues to go up, especially with the things that she can do defensively, and she loves to get on the glass now. It's something that Pat challenged her with at the beginning of the year, but she has become hungrier and hungrier of getting on the, getting on the boards. Played less than 23 minutes in today's game, and She's already in double figures in rebounds with 10. 
You think Kiana Cheney's going to be in the W next year as well? I think so. I, I think her stock has gone up with the confidence that she's gotten uh, from shooting the ball. Just not shooting it very well tonight, though. Misses a couple of free throws. Cheney just three for eight from the field, 0 for two from the strike. Bomb it. Thought about it. Instead, swings it around the perimeter. Augusti with a hand in her face. He's fouled. Cheney kind of looks out of sync right now. Can't get in a rhythm. And three-point shooters, they need to need to find that rhythm, and she hasn't been able to do it yet. First foul called on Kiana Cheney. In between free throws. Allison Hightower will come to the game. This has been what Pat Summit wanted going into today's game, you'd imagine. She inserts the senior, Alberta Augusti, back into the starting lineup replacing Angie Bjorklin and Augusti so far has really been a spark offensively. She has. I think Pat's gotten exactly from her of what she was looking from, but and that's defense. She wants her to play defense, and Pat Summit, for as many years as I've known her, has been, has been a true believer in defense wins games. And the way that they're crashing the boards as well, Pat Summit thinks that Offense sells your tickets, defense wins games, and it's the rebounding that wins championships. Oh, my. Erica White goes down hard. She'll go to the free throw line and shoot two. Nikki Anasicki just laid in the wood. Wow. Erica, Erica White really like her as a point guard. She's really taking charge of this team. And when she's aggressive and attacking, getting to the paint, that was what happened in Knoxville. And, the, and as the game got toward the end of the second half, the ball was in the hands of Erica White. She was attacking. She was in control of that game. Ended up going the free throw line 16 times. Third foul now on Anasicki. She'll have to go to the bench, replaced by Alex Fuller. So the leading rebounder for either club is now sitting on the bench next to Pat Summit. Well, and I think with Alex Fuller in the game now, that's going to cause Candace Parker to have to guard Sylvia Fowles. Hornbuckle over to Gusty. Pull up in traffic. Gets it back. I think Sylvia Fowles got a piece of that on the shot. And one of the things LSU is not doing on the shot when Tennessee shoots the ball is they're not boxing out. All five players are turning and going straight to the rim. Nobody's putting a body on anybody to try to keep Tennessee off the glass. Timeout is called. Man, Chancellor, and he got a chance to talk to his Lady Tigers of LSU. They trail by five against the Lady Balls of Tennessee. Make sure every time my ball goes inside, we are moving, we are working, we are trying to show our numbers to the ball wherever we are. Shannon, you got to be more aggressive offensively. Got to be more aggressive. You know, that's something we count on. And you get down there, if you don't have a pass, you lift, reverse, and let's go the other way. Okay? Yeah. Um, work that baseline anytime they're playing. On well, Pat Summit trying to, to fight off the Lady Tigers of LSU. A couple of days ago, she was trying to fight off the, the raccoons of Knoxville. Eric, a raccoon was about to attack uh, her, uh, what, she got a Labrador? It was up in attack position on its hind feet. And what raccoons do, I have come to learn, is they go for the eyes. And so Pat saw that she was about to attack her dog, and she went and gave the raccoon a forearm and knocked him off the balcony to save her dog. <laughs> now, when she did that, she dislocated her shoulder. She said she then, let me tell you how tough Pat Summit is. Then she sat at home for two hours before she called the doctor because she said she felt like she could manipulate and get her shoulder back in herself. So finally she calls her doctor, her doctor comes, and then Pat and her son Tyler and the doctor then have to manipulate to put her shoulder back in, and she's here today. No sling, no scars. She said she didn't realize what danger she was in until after the fact. <laughs> Tough as nails. Rashante LeBlanc hits the shot that makes it a three-point lead for Tennessee. And it's been a tough year for Pat Summit. Not only the, uh, the raccoon attack, but a couple of weeks ago we saw Tennessee and she was dealing with a sore uh, tailbone. She had been knocked over on the sideline while coaching and was walking around with an ice pack on her back for the majority of the time that we saw her. Yeah, freshman Vicky Ball accidentally tripped her at midcourt in practice. 
Allison Hightower switches the three. And just like that, we're tied at 33. And Pat Summit has seen enough. She calls timeout. Tennessee has had trouble of letting, with letting sleets, leads slip away. She did so, almost let North Carolina come away with a, a win. She also did the same thing with Rutgers, and you know that game came down to a controversial clock issue at the end. So Tennessee's got to learn to put teams away, get the lead, keep the lead, have that killer instinct, and don't give other teams the hope that they can get back in the ball game with you. Well, championship week continues on Tuesday at 7 Eastern time. It'll be the Big East Women's Championship. The Big East Women's Championship presented by Aeropostale as part of Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods on ESPN2. UConn, they're firing on all cylinders right now. They just knocked off Rutgers to win the Big East regular season crown on Monday. They had a big win earlier today against the DePaul Blue Demons. Rutgers stubbing a toe, losing today against Louisville. So the Big East, it's, it's up for grabs right now. Who wants to take on UConn? Well, and Pittsburgh knocked off Notre Dame today as well in the Big East. Oh, bodies just flying, no whistles. It's a scrum. And finally, we're gonna have a tie-up at center court. Possession arrow is gonna keep it with the Tennessee Lady Balls. Well, there is still gas left in this van. When we come back, a retrospective on LSU head coach Van Chancellor. I don't want to be the coach known as the coach that broke the string. I'm going to be frank with you about that now. Uh, is there going to be, and when we start the NCAAs, is there going to be a little pressure on me? Uh, not, now it has nothing to do with I didn't make it at Ole Miss. That, that has nothing to do with it. That's gone. I don't feel that pressure. What I feel is the pressure of saying, hey, we hired old Chancellor. Supposed to have been a pretty fair coach. He couldn't even get us to the Final Four. Van Chancellor talking about the pressure of being the coach on are the Lady Tigers who have gone to the Final Four each of the last four seasons. And now they have a, a former Olympic gold medal winning head coach. And will he be able to get it done? Well, he's got the talent to do so. It's just a matter of the team playing with confidence. And I've seen that this LSU team, they have played like they did when they played against Tennessee the first time, like their championship caliber. They even made a run at LSU, at LSU when they played Connecticut just a little bit too little too late. So I think that they have it in them. It's just a matter of keeping that confidence and playing with the smarts because Van Chancellor's been coaching this team for March from day one. Inside, White a little bit too strong, run down by a form buckle. Candace Parker's been quiet here in the second half, and wow. she's fouled to go to the free throw line. Van Chancellor, he is been around the block a time or two. He won the first four ever WNBA championships while coaching the Houston Comets. Talked about that gold medal in 2004. He went 38-0 with his international and international coaching. He had 211 victories in the WNBA. Parker has yet to score here in the second half. It's the third foul on Sylvia Fowles. Candace Parker had 11 points nine minutes into the game. And she is, well, she scored one bucket basically in the five minute mark of the second half, of the first half. And she is yet to score here in the second half. Oh, missing two free throws in a row. You think the pressure's building. <laughs> when you understand, too, 96 97, that's how far back you can go in Lady Ball history that they haven't come out with at least a regular season or a tournament championship. Hightower tries to get it inside, knocked away. Good defense, Augusti picked up by Fowles. White is fouled on her way to the bucket. And that's what Van Chancellor wants Erica White to be aggressive and attack in the basket. You may think, you know, at 5'3", 5'4", at, at what are you doing going into the line of the Giants? Well, she's doing a great job, and she absorbs that contact, and she's been able to get herself to the free throw line. And the foul is not called on Candace Parker. They say that Vicki Ball got her before the shot. Vicki Ball must have got her with her belly from the back. 
Candace Parker grabs her right shoulder after the block. And so she already came up gimpy one time on a jump shot back in the first half, and now maybe I something dinged up on that shoulder. I don't think it'll affect her. I don't think it'll slow her down. Well, LSU in a 1-3-1 defense, a different look. And it's something that gave Tennessee problems against Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt went a little 1-3-1. Candace from behind the arc. The rebound, Ashley Thomas, and she's pushed by Brooklyn. Carolyn, this hasn't been pretty, but slowly but surely, LSU just playing better basketball. Well, they, it's just grit, and they went to the paint. That's where their money is, to the paint, and they're winning the battle in the paint 16-8 to eight right now. White gets inside. Fouls. And a foul called on Parker trying to keep fouls out of the lane. That's the first foul against Candace Parker. Well, and Sylvia Fouls is doing a good job coming across the lane and not just settling for the lob. Trying to get position on the block so that she can she can catch the ball just coming straight to her instead of having to stand straight up in the lob action and talking to uh, Rebecca at halftime she talked about on the lob pass LSU was lobbing it but by the time Sylvia comes down with it she's too far underneath the basket so she's really at a bad angle that was the 17th foul on Tennessee and fouls misses the front end of a one-and-one -one. in case you're wondering LSU they've only committed two team fouls make it three as this foul is going to be called on Erica White LSU, they've won the last two meetings between these two schools. They won last year in the semifinal round of this SEC women's tournament. And LSU won back on Valentine's Day in a game in Knoxville. After being down by 19 early in the first half, they just played spectacular basketball the rest of the way. And one going away. Three on one break. LeBlanc off the glass and in. Largest lead of the day for the Lady Tigers. Well, think about the average scoring in the 10 meetings that LSU and Tennessee have had in the SEC tournament. LSU has averaged 72.9 points per game, and Tennessee has averaged 72.5. That's a difference of 0.4 points. Even the match. How about my mathematics on that? <laughs> <laughs> Sylvia Fowles inside. Fowles now in double figures with 10 points. Go along with seven rebounds. Parker one on one against Fowles. Fowles wins that battle. Horn buckle the loose ball. Sylvia Fowles has got three, three fouls, so she's got to play smart inside. Not that's pick up that just giving up the shot to Vicky Ball. That was a smart thing to do. Vicky Ball and Candace Parker were both in the paint. You commit to one, you're going to make a pass. You try to block a shot, you pick up that fourth foul. Ashley Thomas outside. That was supposed to be an entry pass over the fouls. Looked more like a shot. Another entry pass is too high for Sylvia Fowles. And now Sylvia not getting back on defense. Ahead of the pack, Candace Parker, and she's fouled. Candace Parker with a chance to get the Lady Balls the lead. Timeout on the floor. Candace Parker showing you why she has had just a splendid career in Knoxville. Welcome back, everyone, to Nashville, Tennessee. The Tennessee Lady Balls, they've tied it at 39. 11.26 remaining, and they have a chance to go ahead. Candace Parker, their all-everything forward, is at the free-throw line. Actually, I guess I can't say all-everything anymore because she's not the SEC Player of the Year. Just a, a really surprising development. Sylvia Fowles, just five days ago, was voted as being the SEC Player of the Year but by the could, coaches. You could say that Candace Parker is all-everything because it's not like she's never, not, never received that award before. She was all-SEC last year. She was rookie of the year, her first year playing. Yeah, so. He has accomplished 
much in her career. Pass is knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with LSU, the Lady Tigers, now trailing by a point. And Chancellor trying to figure this one out. His team a moment ago was up by five. Well, with this team, it's been a defensive struggle. That's where the game's going to be won or lost is in the paint. That battle right there, neither team really shooting it well from the perimeter. It's going to be might on might in that blue sea in the lane. The freshman ball off the glass and in. Wow, that's big for the Lady Vols when you can get that from your freshman down low, but she's got the size advantage on Ashley Thomas. Quickly the other way, Sylvia Fowles gets two right back. Sylvia now up to 14 points to go along with her seven rebounds. Tennessee, they last won this tournament in 2006. They've won 12 SEC tournament titles in total. Parker, the pull-up. She's turning it up. I think she, she's playing like she's got something to prove. Bothered a little bit about, by not being named SEC Player of the Year. Parker has a glance off her fingertips and out of bounds. With that last basket, Candace Parker has now gone over the 2,000 point mark in her career. If my math is good, she now has 2,001 career points. Fourth best in school history. Most every other program in the country, that would be the best in school history. But that's just the fourth best here at Tennessee. Well, when you look at Shamiko Holtzclaw had over 3,000 <laughs> points. <laughs> Even if Candace Parker were to come back and play next year, she's not going to catch Holesclaw. Cheney has it blocked from behind. Here comes Candace Parker and the Lady Vols. Uh-oh. Leave that to the small players. Erica White. Hightower cleans up the mess. And another steal. Smart move by Cheney. Instead of jacking up a three, she had no rebounders down low. Pull the ball back up top. Good play by the seniors on the floor for LSU. The backcourt of Cheney and White doing good things. Fouls misses. Rebound Vicky Ball. The high tower making a pass into Sylvia Fouls. She's making her get out of her stance. She's got to just hit her in the numbers. Give her a bounce pass or hit her straight into the chest instead of making her give up and come out outside the lane. She's better when she's deeper in the paint. 30-second timeout call for Tennessee. Now the story of the evening has been the, the two stars, Sylvia Fowles and Candace Parker. Well, Sylvia Fowles has turned it up inside. She struggled early, went one for six when her first six shots, but now they have found a way to get her the ball in a place that she can score. And Candace Parker started out strong from start to finish. First part of this half, starting a little slow, but she's definitely picked it up in the second half. And Candace Parker with 2,001 points. In case you're wondering, Shemeika Holtzclaw plus 3,025. Shemeika Holtzclaw, it took her 103 games to get to the 2,000 point mark. Candace Parker, it took her one more game. This is her 104th career game. But Bridget Gordon and Tamika Ketchings played for four years. Candace Parker will have only played three, putting up those kind of numbers. And before the shot, foul call on Ashley Thomas. That's the third foul called now on Thomas. She joins Sylvia Fowles in being on the floor with three personal. That's where Tennessee needs to continue to go inside now. Get Thomas or Fowles in foul trouble. Pick up that fourth foul, fourth foul. You know, now while it's still, you got eight minutes left to go. Parker has the ball guarded by Thomas. Ball sets the screen. Parker, oh man, a little semi-hook goes up and in. 22 now for Parker. Both teams are right about that 30% mark in the first half. The shooting has improved greatly after the intermission. 
Miles really wants it underneath. Good catch and finish to the left hand. Left hand, that's what I like about it. Had the presence of mind of know where she was and the reverse layup coming around using that left hand. You think Bo Overton? Yeah, he's in the house. Is he for the Chicago Sky? With, with them getting the number two pick in the draft with Sylvia Faust, he's got to love that. Parker. Oh, takes a lot of contact. Nothing called. And Parker with another two. Pat Summit can't believe it either that there was no call on that one. I just saw a shot of Sarah Parker, the mother of Candace Parker. She's at virtually every game that her daughter plays in. Cheney, no. Ball knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Cheney over to the Lady Ball. Sarah Parker, all kinds of excited. Her daughter, Candace Parker, 24 points now. When we come back, we'll take a look at some of the better dunks we've ever seen for both Sylvia Fowles and Candace Parker. Just across the street from the Country Music Hall of Fame in Nashville. And a couple of record breakers going at it. Tennessee led by Candace Parker on top of LSU. And with Sylvia Fowles by one. And uh, I think no one's going to debate that Candace Parker and Sylvia Fowles are going to be the top two picks in this year's WNBA draft. I think Candace Parker goes number one to the L.A. Sparks. Pair her up with Lisa Leslie coming back. And then... Sylvia Fowles goes to Chicago Sky and Erlena Larkins to Minnesota. I think that's the order it's got to go in. And, Eric, a lot of talk has been made about, they say, Eric, that Candace Parker's coming out early. It's not that she's coming out early. Yes, she has another year that she can play. It would be her fifth season. But she is going to graduate. So if you're graduating within three months of that draft or your class is graduating, that makes you eligible to come into the WNBA. Loose ball, Files picks it up. And she's going to be called for the travel before she can get rid of the basketball. You've coached in the WNBA. So is Van Chancellor. Is there any doubt in your mind that Sylvia Files and Candace Parker are not totally ready right now to play in the league? Uh, there's no doubt. I, I believe they're ready. I think both players will come in and make an impact in their rookie season. Remember, the L.A. Sparks, they're going to have Lisa Leslie coming back from maternity leave. If you add Candace Parker to that mix, that's, that's a pretty good mix right there. Allison Hightower rims out, gets it back. Ashley Thomas is doing a great job. She may not get credit for that rebound, but the tap out, that was big. Extra possession, it's cast in by Kiana Cheney, her third three-pointer of the night. Parker, the junior from Chicago, keeps her dribble alive, working against Cheney over to Bjorkman. Oh, she's doing a great job, all they were, of not letting the guards get into the paint. Just and Augusta. Augusta loses it, Parker strips it back, and LSU with the basketball. Physical defense, and they're going to call Shannon Bobbitt for the personal foul. That's the third on Bobbitt, and will walk the other way and shoot free throws. This is where Erica White's good, down the stretch. She's good at picking up fouls. Bob had moved into her pass. She wasn't there, wasn't set. But down the stretch, the maturity that Erica White has grown into, this is where she wants to be. And I think this is the main person that Van Chancellor wants at the free throw line right now. After going six for six at the free throw line, White misses the front end of a one-on-one. I jinxed her. I, it always happens in every game I ever watch. The announcer says something about the free throw shooting. You got to know who you can say it about. I know. My bad. Nikki Anasicki back into the game playing with three personal fouls. Jump shot, bottom, up and in. These two guards, point guards, are going to go at it right now. Bobbitt can turn on her offense, and when she does, that gets the Lady Hawks rolling. Fouls walks in underneath. Great catch. Using her body, loses it out of bounds. This game for the championship of the SEC tournament. Look at Bobbitt. 
talked about, everybody says the baseline shot, but she told me this morning, I'll shoot it anywhere. When it's the right time, and she wants to mainly be the outlet. When the pass goes into Parker, give her the out pass if the double team comes in. Good defense. Ashley Thomas pokes it away. Shantae LeBlanc over to Thomas. Inside the foul. Another left-handed shot is true. The only thing that you can really say about that is, wow! <laughs> She's got such great size and hands down low. It's desired, too. When she wants it in the block, she could always create a good passing lane to get it inside for her. But you know what? I don't think she's as good as she's going to be once she gets to the WNBA. You know, the other aspect of her game that needs to be added to it is handling the ball, putting it on the floor. You get in the gym, two ball drills. Shot clock down to two. Augusti comes up empty, but it'll stay with the Lady ball. Candace Parker hasn't touched the basketball in a while. Trigger the inbound. Eric White back into the game, replacing Allison Hightop. Brooklyn back in for Tennessee. Well, a lot of times when Candace Parker's taking the ball out, you see the ball come in, and then she's going to step in and be the option. Good strip away. White on the run out. Missed opportunity for LSU. Give credit to Shannon Bobbitt. She hustled back and forced the miss by Erica White. Well, you watch these two go at it. Nice pick by Erica White. But then it's the second. She almost carried the basketball. That's the second the breakaway layup that she's missed. That's getting one. <laughs> We were talking about the softer the side of uh, Pat right. Summit. Maybe not. That's just that's the only time when the camera goes to her when she's got that intense look on her face. Tennessee down by a point. Tennessee needs to find a way to clear out Anasiki, get Sylvia Fowles out of there so that Candace Parker can go one-on-one -on -one with Ashley Thomas down low. Oh, uh, she's Sylvia Fowles is one-on-one -on -one with Anasiki. Now they notice her loose ball. Jorklin comes up with it. Fowles gets it back. And Van Chancellor didn't like the way this possession was starting, and he calls a timeout. Just a 30-second timeout. LSU up by one. They'll have 25 seconds remaining on the shot clock. I think it was a good timeout. Van Chancellor noticed that his team was rattled. Off balance after the scrum that went with Sylvia Fowles to kick the ball out. He said, let me get my team settled down right here. Up for more on Sylvia Fowles. Let's go back over to Rebecca. What's going on, Rebecca? Well, Eric, earlier this season, Van Chancellor said of Sylvia Fowles, she is too nice. That's what's keeping her from being a horse. And in Van speak, a horse is a good thing. <laughs> he said she's gotten a lot better at wanting the ball. He said he still wants her to hunt the ball more, uh, especially uh, early in the possession. He wants her to duck in and demand the ball. You've seen it a lot the latter part of this second half. Every offensive possession, Sylvia Fowles is getting low, stepping in and demanding the basketball. And I think she is, Rebecca, she is doing a great job. And he's been, she's been the go-to for this LSU team down the stretch. And right now, if I'm Van Chancellor, I'm going to ride that horse, too, all the way to a championship. But if it's possible, it's going to have to go through Sylvia Fowles. Chaney makes the three-point lead once again for LSU. Hornbuckle, wild shot, no. Fowles, another rebound. And she's grabbed on the arm. But that's on Anisiki. That's number four. It is indeed on Nikki Anisiki. That's a big deal. All right, we come back. Sylvia Fowles and Candace Parker, the stars, have come out in Nashville tonight. Well, welcome back to Nashville, Tennessee. The Lady Vols trailing by three against the Lady Tigers of LSU. 3-12 remaining. It has been Parker. It has been Fowles just like we expected. That's been the show. Those two... Sylvia Fowles being named SEC Player of the Year. Candace Parker playing motivated that she was not. This is a one and one
Fouls misses the front end. That's the second front end of a one and one that's been missed by LSU. LSU holding out hope that if they can win today's game, win the SEC tournament along with the SEC regular season, that they could be a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Bob it. She can put it on you. At the right time, she knocks down those big threes. Bobbitt only wants big shots. Two and a half remaining. The SEC title on the line. LeBlanc against Brooklyn. Good defense by Brooklyn. Hornbuckle on the wing. See if they can get it to Parker. Candace wants it on the block. Gosh, they need to go to her. And a sick up high over to Bobbitt. Nowhere to go. Loose ball. Hornbuck is going to have to hurry. Parker. Shot clock down to one. And just like that, Tennessee back with the lead. Minute 40 to play. Fouls. Tough shot. She was about eight feet away from the bucket, and she's fouled. This will be a two-shot foul for fouls. What composure by Candace Park. You ask if she's going to be ready for the WNBA. She has such a high basketball IQ. Knowing the amount of time that's on the clock, knowing she has enough time for a little shot fake, and then knocking down the shot. That last foul was called on Nikki Anisiki. That's her fifth. And she is done. So Anisiki will sit out the remaining 97 seconds. Three points, 11 rebounds for the senior from Staten Island. Tomorrow night championship week continues with two conference championships. We start in the Colonial Athletic Association. William and Mary taking on George Mason. That's at 7 Eastern time. Then the West Coast Conference Championship immediately following at 9 Eastern time. What a fantastic week of basketball this will be. And Sylvia Fowles misses the first free throw. And Sylvia Fowles' free throw percentage has gone up. She was shooting almost 66 percent, but down the stretch here, not able to knock it down. That snaps a string of four straight missed free throws for LSU. Now I think you got to see Tennessee use as much shot clock as possible, not giving LSU an opportunity to get a rebound and a run out to score quick. Hornbuckle inside, gets her own miss, and she's foul on the arm. Is that a shooting foul? No, it is not. So it'll still be ball out of bounds on the baseline. With Tennessee's offense, is the inbounders the one that can be dangerous. You're going to have Yorkland that'll be able to come off some screens. And it's working against Sylvia Fowles. Double team out to Yorkland. Fowles runs it down. And a timeout is called by Van Chancellor. LSU, they want to think about this. They trail by a point, 105 remaining. Carolyn, you've won a national championship. You've coached in the SEC. What's Van Chancellor talking about with his team right now, down by a point with 65 ticks remaining? Well, right now he's going to have to break a press. I believe that Tennessee's going to try to take some time off the shot clock so that LSU can't run whatever they want to down the other end. They're going to have to play kind of against the clock to come down and score 28 seconds on the shot clock. They also have to talk about if they score or if they don't. If LSU scores and takes the, and takes the lead over, then they've got to make sure that Tennessee doesn't get a run out. And the thing that Tennessee has been able to do down the stretch when you've got Angie Bjorklund on the floor, Shannon Bobbin on the floor, to knock down that open three. You just saw what's on the line for Sylvia Fowles and LSU. They've won the SEC regular season tournament. We're talking about the seniors. They won the regular season three times. They've gone to three Final Fours, yet they have never won this SEC tournament 
The seniors would desperately love to do so. It's got to be one of the goals for this group of seniors. And five seniors on the floor right now for LSU. Cheney over to LeBlanc. Inside the foul. She muffs it, and Parker picks that out of the air. That was a catchable pass into Sylvia Fowles, and she couldn't control it. That's a big stop, big defensive stop by Tennessee. Parker and Fowles are going at it. That's the two heavyweight champions. And Candace Parker comes out with the better end of the deal. Coming up next after our game, Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods continues with the West Coast Conference Tournament semifinals. It'll be Santa Clara and Gonzaga. This is a one-on-one -on -one situation. Candace Parker at the free throw line. She's two of five tonight. She'll get another. Her mother, Sarah Parker, looking on. Now, Tennessee's got to make sure that they play transition defense after this free throw. Not that let LSU get a run out because they've got Keanu, Keanu Chaney and LeBlanc. They can shoot the three or open things up for Sylvia Fowles to score quick down low. One timeout remaining for LSU. Fowles inside. Misha Williams loses it on rounds over to Tennessee. And now timeout is called by Tennessee as Van Chancellor stews. Coach, Coach Chancellor's not happy. Felt like there was some contact down low with Sylvia Files and Candace Parker. I think that's pretty good defense. Parker only wants one thing. The main thing, she may not be SEC Player of the Year. She's trying to win herself an SEC championship, a tournament championship, at least come out with something this year and her last year playing as a Lady Vol. So the situation now, Tennessee up by three. They have the basketball. LSU's going to have to foul if they want the ball back. LSU, well, they don't necessarily have to. They go for the steal right now and play defense, playing for the steal. They don't have to go the cheapy foul, but if they don't get the steal, then they're going to need to foul quickly. LSU, a perfect 14-0 during the regular season in the SEC. Included in those 14 wins, a win in Knoxville against the Lady Vols. And but Candace Parker, just playing a fantastic SEC tournament, willing her team so far to a three-point lead. Look at 26, 25, 28, and that's back-to-back -back games. And they get it easily to Candace Parker, who will be fouled by LeBlanc. She's really got, Candace Parker has gotten it done. She has stepped up big. You know, and I think because Candace Parker is so good at times during the season, sometimes she may get bored a little bit and coast. But when a championship is on the line, Candace Parker is stepping up big. And she believes, as I think all do, great players, you really see them rise and shine when their back's against the wall and a championship is on the line. But she misses the front end of a one and one Door still open for LSU, down by three. Cheney, long shot. To our lady that could have gotten a better shot than that. LSU, they go for the three, and it was a contested three. 
Well, and the game is, it's a three-point game, and they had plenty of time in the shot clock to be able to execute and get a better shot instead of Cheney having to launch up the shot that she did. So now Vicki Ball will go to the free throw line. This is still a one and one situation. Ball, just a freshman, shoots 77% at the line. For the freshman, and look, she hadn't even cracked a smile. Very serious, very focused right here. The freshman hits them both. That's and the final timeout called for Tennessee. That's a good timeout. Give her team the opportunity to get their defense set. So LSU doesn't get a quick run out and also talk about how you want to defend. I'm sure she's discussing you don't foul. Don't foul. Give them give up a layup. Make them have to use some time off the clock. But you don't want to give put LSU in the position to get an and one if they're driving to the basket. And don't foul a three-point shooter. Don't forget, coming up immediately after our game, the West Coast Conference semifinal between Santa Clara and Gonzaga. Gonzaga, if you haven't had a chance to watch them play this year, they've got a guard in Jeremy Cargo who can just go get it. One of the best leapers in the entire country. All right, but first things first. LSU trailing by five, 17 seconds remaining. They're going to have to hurry. LeBlanc all the way to the rim, and she misses. Loose ball picked up by Augusti. She'll be fouled, and now this is basically all she wrote. Pat Summit, she can smell tourney title number 13. And LSU, Carolyn, they picked a bad time to go cold. And Chancellor's team, they have not had a field goal in close to four minutes of game time. Wow. Free throws have been no problem yeah. for Tennessee. It's been down the stretch. Tennessee's made some good decisions. They were aggressive going to the basket, didn't turn the ball over. And look at this move. Candace Parker getting a, a standing ovation. She really did play and has got to be MVP of the SEC tournament with her play and the things that she has done. And also, Eric, I mean, how about this? This is Summit's 18th 30 win season, six in a row. And that'll do it. We can put it in the books. The Tennessee Lady Balls, led by Candace Parker, they win the 2008 SEC tournament. Candace Parker may not be the SEC regular season player of the year, but I can tell you this right now. The votes haven't been tabulated, but she will be the SEC tournament player of the year. In my book, definitely show. She stepped up. She played like she had something to prove. Now, can she carry that through? And I think she can in the on into the NCAA tournament. Sylvia Fowles in LSU. They came oh so close, but they lose by six to Pat Summit. And the Lady Balls. Rebecca standing by with Candace Parker. Rebecca, take it away. Candace, you played this entire SEC tournament like you had something to prove. How gratifying is it to win this SEC championship? We wanted it really bad. Um, we haven't won an SEC championship. They beat us in the regular season. We just had something to prove. They beat you pretty soundly just about three weeks ago. How has your team changed since that loss to LSU on Valentine's Day? Postseason. We step it up in postseason. If we could play all regular season like this, then we'd be undefeated. All right, Candace, congratulations. Thank you. Eric. Rebecca, thank you so much. Just a tremendous performance by Candace Parker and Tennessee. They win. For my partner, Carolyn Peck and Rebecca Lobo, I'm Eric Collins saying so long from Nashville, Tennessee. Now let's send you out to the West Coast Conference Tournament. Good night, everybody.